Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the cam jump phenomena and its effect. So here, this cam jump phenomena it is non-desirable phenomena. Why? Because if you see here, this is the radial or disc cam, and uh, at the top side of this cam is the roller follower. This roller follower is constituting of one platform at the top side, and the spring is provided helical coil spring is provided in between the platform and the roller. So here this is the trace point for the roller follower and for the knife edge this is the trace point part. So here what is actually cam jump phenomena? So initially when your this uh, cam is rotating it is having 360 degree motion angular motion this follower due to this spring will be continuously in contact with this cam. So when this cam is rotating so there will be rise, dwell and fall position. So this most common application of this cam and follower is in your IC engine wall system. So what happens? How this cam jump cam jump phenomenon occurs? So initially, when your this cam is having some limiting speed, so this follower it continuously just make contact with the cam. But when this cam it attain one certain speed that is uncontrollable speed, this follower it will try to just lose the contact from the cam. So this phenomenon is called as chattering noise of the cam. So due to this chattering noise, there will be maximum wear and tear of the follower as well as on the surface of the cam. So in order to avoid this cam jump phenomena, in the next slide we will see what are the majors. So here if you see, the cam jump phenomenon occurs in case of cam which is operating under the action of compressed spring load. So this load is nothing but the transient condition. This chattering noise is, is when it is taking place, that condition is called as the transient condition where the speed is maximum and the follower tries to lose the contact from the cam. And next part is when the jump means when there is jump of cam and follower separating due to excessively unbalanced force. As we know, uh, your follower possesses some mass. So due to mass inertia forces exist and due to this inertia forces, there will be imbalance of static as well as dynamic load or force. So there will be negative or positive acceleration, both acceleration we will getting. And now, as we know, this is undesirable effect. So how now we are going to divide means how we are not going to avoid this effect. So first measure is you have to control the speed of the cam. Means you have to just maintain the speed of the cam below the limiting speed. Second thing, if you increase the stiffness of the spring, then you then also just the follower will remain in contact with the cam. So the next point is what? By increasing the stiffness of the spring, we can avoid this cam jump phenomena. And uh, in the initial setup that I have shown, where platform is provided, on that platform, if you provide some dead weight, so the follower will remain in contact with the cap. So by this way also, we can avoid the cam jump phenomena. So these are the two to three measures required to avoid the cam jump phenomena. Now, uh, I will show you some videos regarding the setup. Very much important that you have to study first. 
So initially, we will see the basic command, cam and follower. Okay. So cam part is connected or basically fitted on one of the shaft. That shaft is connected to this motor. This is an electric motor. Okay. This electric motor and this particular cam are connected with the help of shaft and this coupling. This is a coupling. Okay. So this is the basic element which is fitted on this frame. This is called as a base frame. Okay. So that's it. Next, these are the supporting frames. Okay. In which we have fitted this follower along with this vertical rod. Okay. And this vertical rod is connected to this platform. This platform is connected to the spring. It is an already compressed spring which is fitted over here, which is used to apply the preload on this cap through the follower. Okay, the follower is applying preload by the use of the weight of this follower and the weight of this rod and the stiffness of this spring. The force is getting created by the stiffness of the spring. If the stiffness of the spring is more, the preload, the force which is getting applied by this particular platform will be damped by this follower. So, the stiffness we can adjust by this platform, this platform is rotated and you can adjust the stiffness. If you rotate in the clockwise direction, then the stiffness is getting increased. If the stiffness is more, this preload, the load which is getting applied by follower of the cam is So, this part we will see later on, but initially these three components are very much important. And to change the speed of this electric motor, okay, we are using this demon stand. This demon stand is like this, okay, there is circular knob which is provided, this knob becomes rotated and we will increase the voltage. After increasing the voltage, you can increase the speed, okay, of the shaft of electric motor. So, these are the important parts which are required. And also, we are using one of the instruments, which is called as ligand indicator or mechanical comparison for the measurement of this displacement of the model. Practically, we will complete this experiment in two parts. The first part of this experiment in which we will perform the drawing of cam profile from the available practical setup. Okay, so how to draw the cam profile of the available experimental setup that part we will see now. So in this case, here you can see there is a scale, circular scale is provided on which there is a marking from 0 to 360 degrees as the cam is consisting of 360 degrees. Okay, so for drawing that cam profile, we have to measure the values of displacement of this follower. Okay, and that displacement we will measure by the use of dial gauge indicator along with the stand. Okay, so how to measure that displacement, that part we will see later on. But initially we will see this reading, that is reading from 0 to 360 degrees. We will take a step size of 10 degrees. Okay, means what? We will initially take the reading at 0 degrees. There is a pointer. Okay, this pointer is provided. So, this pointer initially we will keep at 0 reading. Okay, and we will measure the initial reading of displacement of the plunger. Okay, so after that what we will do? We will rotate this simply like this by 10 degrees because step size we have considered as 10 degrees. We will take the reading that is reading of displacement of this follower. Next to that we will rotate this by again 10 degrees. We take the third reading. Again we rotate by 10 degrees. So it will come at 40 degrees. 
okay and we take the displacement heading next to that we take this we rotate this particular pointer to shifting okay and we take the displacement reading like that we move to 60 degrees take the reading 70 degrees and take the reading okay and again we rotate this by 10 degrees and we keep this at 70 degrees 80 degrees 90 degrees okay like that we will complete the reading total 36 readings we will get okay as we are taking the reading at every 10 degrees so the readings which we are measuring are the readings of displacement of this platform okay this platform is connected to the follower if the cam is rotating then follower will have to move in the upward and downward direction okay so that motion will make this platform to move in the upward and downward direction okay so we will attach a dial gauge indicator plunger at this location okay so for each 10 degrees rotation we note down the reading of dial gauge okay which is attached over here on this platform okay and take the reading accordingly so for each rotation of 10 degrees of cam the follower displacement will we will measure this is the first in second part of the experiment what we will do we will simply <coughs> check the speed we check the speed of rotation of this particular shaft so we measure the speed readings by the use of tachometer so tachometer is the instrument which is used for the, the measurement of speed of shaft okay so that value we will get in terms of rpm so that reading we will measure here initially for completion of part 1 of the experiment okay i will start this instrument i keep initially i will keep this uh, demonstrator reading to zero to avoid any sort of sudden noise i will start this setup you can see the reading over here okay in this demonstrator the light is on now and i have connected these two wires which are coming from uh, electric motor to this i will start rotating this particular voltage increasing okay i start increasing the voltage so simply for taking the readings initially how to keep this at initial condition and then how to start this so i will start this kind of uh, rotational motion you can observe and you can take the reading simultaneously for the rotation of this particular setup with the help of uh, tachometer you can take the speed readings as well as with the help of this demonstrator you can take the voltage readings so at what particular reading this setup makes more noise that reading you will measure as the critical speed So that reading you note down. So there will be two columns. First column is of the voltage reading, and the second column is of speed reading. And after which speed suddenly there is noise increment, that reading you note down. So that reading is called as the critical speed. Thank you. Thank you.